Amazing International Christian Fellowship online campus and all of those that call ICF Rome your family of faith, or maybe you're just joining us today for the very first time. My name is Pastor Jennifer Pasquale, and I want to say welcome to you. If you're new to the city of Rome, I want you to feel that you are a part of the family of faith here at ICF Rome. If you're looking and watching and joining the service online, I want to say thank you for participating. Thank you for investing in your own life that your faith will grow, that you have opportunity to worship Jesus. So I invite you to lean into today's service. I want you to know that we pray over every service. I believe this year we are to be the living proof, the evidence that God is at work in each of us. I also believe that Jesus, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is the living, loving proof for your life, for your miracles. So today, as you worship, ask the Lord to hear your worship, receive your worship. As you hear the ministry of the word, lean in and say to the Lord, how do you want to change my thinking? How do you want to increase my faith? How do you want to form my spiritual walk so that I can walk in victory? I'm so happy you're a part of this service today. I want you to celebrate with the worship and I want you to grow in the word of God. Enjoy today's service. If everything comes undone, we will still praise your name. We will magnify your name. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives and what you're doing in this church. And Lord, we want to honor you by giving you praise. Would you sing this with me?
give God a great praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's offering time. So I need to hear more. <laughs> it's offering time. Yeah, you may be seated. So, I thank each and everyone for um, givings, in, uh, you're faithful in your givings and uh, repeat after me like this, tell full, full. say it again, full. full, so God is, God is ready to give a full blessing to you, so, so I, I encourage you with the Luke 638, is my one of the favorite scriptures that tells me that how obedient we should be, so we are in the obedient proof in this month. So, Luke 6.38, give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full. Press down, shaken together, make room for more. Running over and poured into your laps. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. So God is promising like you will return in full. So whatever you are sowing, your time, talents, your resources, it, it never wastes. Every penny matters, every minute matters to God. That you allow yourself to God, God will change to something greater. In my life, I have seen, I witnessed that God changed me way better than I am. <laughs> like two, <laughs> three, four years back. So I believe that God will give you a blessing in whichever areas you are praying for, and your seed also brings you blessing. So Let's, let's stand together and we have three ways to give. You can give in person, online, and today the POS, is, the POS machine is working. So we thank God. So you, you can give if you, are, if, you are, if you like to give with the card. And let's hold the envelopes and we, let's pray. Lord, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity. The blessing that you are giving us, Lord, we will, we will be obedient to your blessing what you're giving Lord Jesus Lord we will pour into your kingdom that you will bless us more and more and you promise that your laps will be full of blessing how blessing it is like Lord Jesus Lord you will bless each and everyone and they will reap the great harvest in this land in this city in the name of Jesus Amen. Thank you for singing. Thank you for praising. Thank you for giving. Look at somebody and say thank you for being here. I am glad we're all here today, amen? In spite of the spring weather in Rome that makes us a little bit chilly, I'm glad you're here. God is faithful. The fire of the Holy Spirit is strong, amen? Amen? So today, um, before I forget, I made notes, but I want to welcome my dear friends, dear, dear, dear supporters of ICF Rome from the beginning. Pastor Wayne and Julie Clifton are back. Will y'all stand? Turn around and let them see you. They've been with us many, many times over the years, not just in, since 2015 and beyond, but even before that, um, friends and dear. They were part of the church we planted in Louisiana and just uh, loved us forever and ever and keep loving me and I love you and thank you for being with me. And uh, so if you need encouragement, listen, Pastor Wayne is from Louisiana. He is a soul winner. So don't come telling him that you're like, you know, not sure because he's going to give you the fire of the Holy Spirit instruction about walking out there and having faith. And I love that. So thank you. Julie helps us with our finances, even online remotely, and so now she's going to be here with Yao and Sharon and Ben Joseph as well, but it's a tremendous blessing to have such a great team of leadership that's online and on campus, amen? So I am so thankful for that. Now, today, I realized, which I didn't know because, you know, in a church's history, sometimes one person says, well, it started at this time. And another person says, well, it started here. But I think the founding pastor, the one who started it, knows when it started, right? So the founding pastor of ICF Rome was Terry Hoggard, Pastor Terry Hoggard. And he made a big announcement today that this church is 35 years old today. Can we say happy birthday, ICF Rome? So he was in the city for like two years, and then on this day, 
35 years ago, they launched the International Christian Fellowship of Rome. He pastored for 10 years. Then he went on to pastor the International Church in Belgium for 10 years. And now he works with international churches literally all over the world, especially in Europe. And then there was another pastor, Mike Hopkins, for about 11 years. And then Pastor Rick and I came. So we're the third. I'm the third slash fourth. Um, that's pretty good, huh? Three pastor units in 35 years. I just think it's so exciting. And so I want you to, um, Chris, I know you were probably one of the first. Ben Joseph is not in this service, and I don't know if Mary Carey's here. But so, Chris, if you were here... Uh, in the 90s, I guess it would have been, in the 80s. If you were here in the 80s, stand up. <laughs> okay, awesome. Keep standing, that's awesome. So Pastor Chris was a kid. Don't tell me that ministering to children doesn't matter. Somebody in this church ministered to him when he was a kid, and now he's back 35 years later, ministering to our children and children all over Italy, and we're so thankful for that. If you were here in the 90s, okay, in the 2000, in 2010, we're getting close to me. Oh, Rosemary, yeah, oh, 2010. Okay, 2015, anybody 2015? Keep standing, keep standing. Okay, 2017, that's a whole bunch of you. 2017, <laughs> 2018, come on, when to get up. 2020, in the last three years, 2021, woo, 2023, that's everybody. Y'all stand up. <laughs> Happy birthday. Now, wait a minute, keep standing for just a minute because I wonder. What did that congregation, maybe it was 10, maybe it was 20 on that first Sunday ever, and then as they grew over the next 10 years, who did they talk to? Who did they pray for their daughter and their daughter was healed? And then their daughter began to share a testimony, right? I want you to look around. I want you to recognize that you matter to the history of what we're doing in Rome. We are putting a permanent spiritual footprint in Rome. How do we do that? By obeying God, right? And being the living proof. So can we give God really, Bose, will you just take a picture? Just kind of zoom around for you. Come on, I want you to praise God. This is something to thank God for, to have a ministry full of the power of the Holy Spirit for 35 years. God is faithful. Amen. 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 And I am blessed because that means that um, 26 years ago, Pastor Rick and I were ministering in ICF Rome in St. Paul's Within the Walls. So I have been ministering in this church for 26 years. I'm just a baby. I was just a baby then, but praise God. Amen. God bless you. Look at somebody and say, God is good and you can be seated. I'm excited. I'm excited that someone's obedient proof, Pastor Terry, God spoke to him, sell everything and go to Italy. In fact, go to Rome where the Catholic church is so big and bring the power of the Holy Spirit in a full gospel Pentecostal church ministry. Set up and tear down. Y'all think you got a lot of work to do? All the tech crew and the worship team and all that? Every week, set up and tear down every single thing. And when it was over, box it all up, load it out, go put it somewhere, and bring it that back the next week. <laughs> Chris knows. Chris was probably one of the kids helping box and load. You're boxing and loading today when you obey God, when you serve God. And I'm excited to think about, we are all, you write your name, Ellie. You write your name in there. I'm part of the history of ICF Rome. I'm also very happy to have Brother Carlos. Would you just stand and wave at him from Pastor Josh's International Church in Milan, working here in Rome and already serving on the worship team. We're so very thankful for that. I have a magnifying glass there today because we are going to continue our series. 
I want to remind you of a couple things. If you have made a new commitment, a fresh commitment, and you want to be baptized immediately after this service in the business office, I'm going to meet with all the water baptism candidates, and we are going to have about a 20, 30-minute class time together, and we are going to make that declaration next Sunday. Say next Sunday. Next Sunday is going to be awesome. Next Sunday, Pastor Scooter Glenn uh, from Church Alive in North Carolina, a church that has been ministering with us for probably nine years here at ICF Rome. They're coming back. They're our first mission team post-COVID, okay? They're going to do all kinds of things. They're going to help us with the baptism, set up, tear down. They are going to bless you next Sunday after second service. So I want to remind you and invite you, you have to register so we have to have enough food. If you have been serving, now I love you, and if you've been attending, that's wonderful. But that's not serving in the way I'm talking about, okay? So it's not an all-church lunch. But so many people serve week in and week out, and when we do something, you have to set up and tear down and work. So next week... And I'm going to have something special for the media team because they still have to do something when we're blessing. Church Alive is putting on an all-in appreciation red carpet luncheon for anyone who has been serving in ministry. You've been serving in children, in hosting team, in prayer ministry. You've been serving on a regular basis in the last six months, okay? I want you to be at that luncheon, but I need you to register so that I can... Make sure we have enough food. Look at somebody and say, have you been serving? (laughs) And then you might need to answer that in a little different way. But thank you, thank you, thank you. I want you to be there. I want to bless you. I want to say thank you for being all into ministry because you're doing something that that early church did 35 years ago. And because somebody did that with Pastor Terry, including Chris's family, who also went to launch another international church in Padova. Isn't it cool? Today we have Milan represented. We have Padova. They're about to celebrate 25 years. God is faithful. Sometimes we think the blessing seems so far away. But if you don't give up obeying and trusting the Lord, blessing comes. Amen? So today, I want to talk about obedient proof, examining our decisions. As we reflect on the Easter week and the empty tomb and the empty cross and the resurrection, we see and we remember from last week a word that we called Jesus. Does anybody remember it? What was it? Yahweh. Who said that? Yes, thank you, Alex. Yahweh. Say Yahweh. We welcome the online campus, and I want you to say Yahweh in the chat. What does Yahweh mean? Master. Adonai. Master. Say it, master. Don't be afraid to say it. He is my Adonai. He is my master. He wants to be your master. You know, if you could do your life so great without Jesus, I think you'd already be in heaven. It's really not possible to do your life great without Jesus as the master. But I want us to continue on for another 35 years. I want you to be standing wherever you're standing in 35 years and be able to say, I have continued to call him Adonai, my master. Jesus, our Adonai and master, wants us to obey his commands and, say and, not just obey. That's like master, slave, no relationship. He wants us to obey his command and walk in relationship with him. This morning in the pre-service prayer at 945, which you're welcome to join us anytime, it'll be packed next week with the team in there as well, I asked, what are you coming expecting God for today? That's relationship. You know, when uh, my children were younger and they had relationship with us, They had no problem, especially Erica Jane, coming and saying, I need money. 
I need a new car. I need a new laptop. I need a new phone. I need money to go with my friends. They had no problem saying, I need something. And the good father that Pastor Rick was and the good mama that I was, we would say, maybe, or yes, or not right now, or you need to work for it a little bit longer. How much are you willing to invest in what I'm going to invest back? And you know, I, I don't have this in my notes, but I remember when Erica was 25 or 26, something like that, and according to American law, she couldn't be on our insurance anymore. And so also Pastor Rick at that time said, and you also can't be on the payroll anymore. You're 25, you need to pay your own bills, which meant she had to pay her car payment. And she was like, oh, but dad, you know, I'm only working part time. And he's like, you have a car? Yeah, I will pay for the car insurance, but you're going to pay the car payment. And I'm not giving you cash in your account all the time. And the day that she went in to pay her first, I can only imagine what the bank must have felt. This young girl walks in and she's like, y'all know Titan. She walked in and said, I'm here to pay my payment. <laughs> and then when she paid it, she was like, I did my first payment. Woo <laughs> Can you imagine that's what God feels when he says, you know what? I've equipped you. I've told you what to do. And now it's not that he's leaving you alone. It's not that he's not there supporting you. But he's saying, now I want you to go. Go do something with what I gave you. And I'm telling you, when you do something with what God gave you, like last Sunday, and 25 people raised their hand to say, I want Yahweh to give me a new way of serving him. I said, Lord, I will do whatever you tell me to do, even if it's hard, because it's a life change for somebody else. Amen? So I want you to, ex to imagine this morning that there must be an exchange between our selfish desires and choosing daily, say daily, type it in the chat daily, to put Jesus first in every decision. I mean, literally, every decision. Lord, is this, you know, what you need me to do today? Lord, um, where am I going to park today? Lord, am I paying attention to who I'm supposed to talk to today? That's relationship. That's him being Adonai and me being in relationship to him. I want you to think about these things. How will you obey him? How will you be the living proof and the obedient proof? See, we prayed. In fact, this year I had a team of people praying with me about this theme and what each month would be. And I can't think of a better theme for the month of April, resurrection, than obedient proof. Jesus was the ultimate example of obeying Father God. He did not have to come to this earth. He did not have to leave the halls of heaven. But Abba said, I, you know what, my people make mistakes. They don't always pay their bills right. They don't always walk in integrity. And sometimes they really sin. And I need you to go down there and show them how to live on that planet and walk in holiness. Not perfection. I mean, Jesus was perfect, but he cried. He threw over the money changers' tables. He went boating with his disciples. He had relationship, but he obeyed. Jesus. Say, Jesus obeyed. Our world says you don't have to obey nobody except yourself. That's not true. And that will send you straight to hell, I'm telling you. We have to obey Father God. You're like, Pastor Jen, wow, that's a little bit strong for the Sunday after Easter. I want you to keep that resurrection power. And the only way you're going to do that is if you follow in obedience with what God says. Amen? So I want you to think about something. I've asked my dear friend Beverly to come and help me. Because I want you to imagine something. After Easter, the resurrection, after the resurrection, the disciples did a few things. So I asked Beverly to come and help me read the scripture from Luke chapter 24. I want you to, you can watch her or you can close your eyes. But I want you to imagine 
as if Beverly was one of the disciples telling you the story, something that happened after Jesus resurrected. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In, the more, in addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said. But they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish are you? How slow to believe all that the prophets had spoken. When, when he was sat at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven of, and those with them, assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord is risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke bread. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, why are you troubled and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece, a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. And he said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Amen. Thank you, Beverly. Amen. Amen. Can you imagine, can you, can you just imagine that was them talking to you about what happened after the resurrection? Can you imagine that they're saying, he, we thought it was going to be this. We had hoped, but they did not see Jesus who was right there. They didn't see him. If we're going to be that obedient proof, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen? And Jesus says, why are you troubled? Why do you doubt? And then what did he do? He opened the scriptures. He opened their minds so they could understand. So I want you to look at these three things, these statements this morning. The first one, why do I obey? 
Maybe you need to take a picture of that because that's a magnifying glass. I want you to imagine why. Look inside of yourself. Why do you obey? Because you're afraid someone will judge you? Because you want to present yourself as like a good Christian? Because you're afraid of hell? Because you want heaven? What if it's because you want to be in relationship with Jesus and he said do it? You know, Erica wanted relationship with her father, with her mother, and even the bank. And I'm telling you, the day she paid off that car, we got a big, loud video. I don't have no more car payment. There was a blessing in that obedience. She did it. She was part of the answer to a prayer she had prayed. She did it. The second question this morning is, how do I obey? Maybe you're saying to me, Pastor Jen, I know that some people have such faith. It just seems like they're so strong. I will tell you, someone recently wrote me and said, I know it always seems like you're so full of faith and you have such a strong countenance, but I also know that there are times when you need prayer. And I said, you better believe it. There is a story behind every single person's face. I want you to just take a minute. And look at someone. If you're online, look at the person you're watching. But I'm serious. I want you to look in each other's eyes. You can smile. Just look in their eyes. I know it's hard not to talk, but I see you. I know that it's difficult. I see that you're walking by faith. And I believe God has given me some words for us this morning. And third, what is the fruit or the blessing of obedience? Because, you know, we want to obey. Erica wanted to obey, but she also wanted that car. So there was a little fruit and blessing because she worked. She made money, and therefore she had the fruit to go in and make the car payment and to keep driving. And look at how God works. All these years later in her life, her company buyed her car for her, bought her car for her this year. Isn't that cool? Uh, that wasn't in my notes, but there is a fruit and a blessing when you obey Jesus. Obedient proof. Adonai, our master, examine your decisions. He said in verse 53, or it says in scripture, they stayed continually at the temple praising God. John 20, 21 through 23 and verse 31 in the Passion says this. So why do I obey? First of all, they stayed continually in their relationship in the house of God, in the temple of God. There's a reason why this church is 35 years old. There's a reason why the Grays went to start another church in Padova. And there's a reason why there's a church in Milan. And then they send us a blessing from their church for a little bit. There's a reason why there was a church in your country in Ghana. There's a reason. They stayed continually. Your physical body... Your work schedule, your friend activity, summer's coming. I love you, but listen to me. There are things that will always pull you away from attending in the temple of God. There's a reason why they were able to stay strong. They walked in the temple. Even Jesus as a child went to the temple. John 20 says this, Jesus repeated his greeting, peace, say peace. Type it in the chat. Why do I obey? It gives me peace. Peace to you, he said. And he told them, just as the Father sent me, now I'm sending you. And then taking a deep breath, he blew on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. I send you to preach the forgiveness of sins. And people's sins will be forgiven. But if you don't proclaim the forgiveness of their sins, they will remain guilty. And verse 31 says, all that is recorded here is so that you will fully believe. Say fully. I didn't tell. Did you say full? Yeah, I didn't tell him. He didn't tell me. Full. You will fully believe. You will be fully blessed. You will be fully empowered. Say full. God wants you to be fully immersed. That's what we're going to do next week. We're going to fully immerse ourselves. Amen? 
Believe that Jesus is the anointed one, Yahweh, Messiah, the Son of God, and that through your faith to him, you will experience eternal life by the power of his name. Why do I obey? I'm going to tell you some things I think, to, I think about. You can write some things the Holy Spirit prompts you to write down. I want you to pray about it this week. Why do I obey? I obey when I want to. I obey when I don't. I obey when I'm discouraged. I obey when I'm uncertain. I obey because Jesus obeyed. I obey because God is bigger and better and more powerful than any element in my life. Say more powerful. Type it in the chat, more powerful. Why do I obey the creator of the universe? Why do I obey the resurrected Jesus? Yes, because he's more powerful than anything I'm facing. I trust in that investment of obedience. Do you? You trust in your investment at the store. You trust in your investment at the gas station if you have a car or a moped or something. You trust every time you plug in something to the electricity. You trusted when you sat on that chair today. Do you trust God with your obedience? I can feel it when we talk about, oh, God's going to heal you. Yeah. Oh, God's going to save your family members. I'm not talking about you, right? Your family members. Yeah. And then we say, Adonai, Master, I need to obey him. And I feel people go, but wait, Pastor Jen, I have my feelings and I have my agenda. I love God. I'm not a sinner, but I got things I got to do. Are they more important than obedience to Jesus? Are they more important than obedience to Jesus? You know, we talk about children's ministry, and I got a message from my daughter that Giovanna, who was touched in, we're having Kids Fest on Saturday. I need you to be here. I I don't care if you have children. I need you to be here to talk to the parents who bring their children. I need you to be here to be a blessing to the team members who are coming to serve, using their vacation time to come and help us. I need you on Saturday. I want you to invest, not because you're going to get something back and get popcorn or candy, but because Jesus said, I want you to be faithful. My daughter Giovanna was touched here, my granddaughter, over there in a room in worship. During Kids Fest, Kids Camp, it changed her life. And this, just a couple weeks ago, she preached a sermon about what God spoke to her heart. And the leader of 400 churches in Kansas sent a message to my daughter. I saw Giovanna's video. I didn't know she was your daughter. But we were so moved by what God had done in that nine-year-old girl. I had to write you and say, amazing. We get to be a part of that testimony. We invested. We we set up chairs. We turn on lights. We do music and media. Why do we obey? Because it's changing the generations. It's the obedient proof. You can trust the investment to obey God. I'm not saying it's easy. It's not. Sometimes it's hard. It might be the hardest thing you do on certain days. You may feel compelled to do something different. I want you to think about that. But the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, I'm going, but don't worry. I'm not leaving you alone. In fact, Pastor Rick said, go ahead, pay your bill. I'm not leaving you all alone. I'm going to take care of the insurance. I'm going to make sure that in case anything happens, you're fully covered. Jesus said, I'm leaving, but I'm going to leave the Holy Spirit. It's like his insurance for us. You're fully covered, fully equipped, fully empowered to be successful. Amen? Amen. So how do I obey? I'm glad you asked. I receive the power of the Holy Spirit. So I have the spiritual fortitude to obey. So when I'm tempted to say no, I say to the Holy Spirit, Basta, leave me alone. Get out of here. Yushita, you get out of here. That means exit if you're watching online. I say to the enemy, stop getting in my thoughts. Amen? How do I obey? It isn't me. It's the Holy Spirit saying that the enemy can't dwell in your brain when you are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, when you meditate on the Word of God. I obey through faith. Faith isn't based on what I see. I haven't looked, hear me, I have not looked at a financial summary 
to determine if it's a good investment to obey God. That is a worldly mindset. I look to the scripture. I don't want to be like those disciples. Can you imagine, Bose, will you come here a minute? I, we didn't practice this. Can you imagine the disciples are walking along? You can be Jesus right now, but only for right now, okay. Can you imagine? They're walking along, and Jesus is like, I'm right here the whole time. But they're like, I don't know where he is. We had hoped that he would come. I'm sure you can look at me kind of funny, like just for right now. Huh? I'm sure Jesus was like, I'm right, can you do this? <laughs> I'm right here. Can you imagine? He's right there. Yeah, come here a minute. Can you imagine? So then, the, then they're like, he's here, over here on this side. And we're like talking, but, but where is he? We don't know where he is. Why isn't he there? We, I don't know. And then Jesus is like, <laughs> Hello? huh? I want you to get that image in your brain. We don't look to a financial summary or what the world says or the stock market says or the government says to believe that he's walking with us. Give them a hand. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I want you to imagine he's walking right beside you, angel. When you're doing something and you're, you're tempted to doubt and wonder and the Holy Spirit's like, angel, I got you. Don't forget, I got you. Sarah, when you're unsure, when your feelings and your emotions, but you know as you testified on Wednesday, suddenly, I got you, the Holy Spirit is saying. You can type it in the chat. He's got me. How do I obey? It's by faith, not based on something I see. I'm trusting in the Lord my God. I don't do my how with a world view. I challenge you. The world is so full of politically correct and a worldview. Don't forget to go to your word. Don't, the God's word, the Bible. This is my Bible. Go to that and see what he tells you to do. Go to that and see what he says is sin and what isn't. It's not just the Ten Commandments. There's a lifestyle that God wants us to live, to follow him. We're not perfect, but that's why he suffered. So when we make a mistake, we can say, Jesus, forgive me. I choose my how with a God-centered approach to every decision I make. I, I, this is not in my notes either, but have you fasted and prayed about a decision lately? The Bible says some things don't happen without prayer and fasting. Sometimes we come to God in a prayer as if it's like Erica saying, I need the payment. I need the payment. But what if the Holy Spirit says, I want you to take this petition before me. I want you to pray and fast. I want you to set aside a meal or something you do every day for seven days, for three days, for 30 days. And say, Holy Spirit, in this moment, I'm not asking you what I want. I'm saying, how do I obey? And can you show me? the way. Can you reveal yourself to me so that I don't ignore the fact that you're standing right beside me? Amen? Amen. No translation missing in scripture. In case you didn't know it, it's kind of there in every language. If you don't have the app, ask me. I'm serious. Every language. And when you don't know what to pray in English or Italian or your language, you can pray in the Holy Spirit because that's when the power of heaven comes on us and the power equips us and empowers us. Somebody say amen. amen. Luke 24, 45 says, then he opened their minds so they could understand the scripture. He said, I'm going to give you this, but I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he's the spirit of truth. They said in verse 24, we don't see him. You ever say that? I don't see Jesus in this situation. They said in verse 21, but we had hoped. I've said that. I had hoped it would be a different way. I had hoped. But he said in verse 38, why are you troubled? And why do doubts fill your mind? Romans 5.5 5 says, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. John 14.1 says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. John 14.15 says, if you love me, keep my commands and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate. That's a person who speaks up on your behalf. Yes, Albert, when I can't do it by 
myself. I have an advocate that takes my petition to the Lord. And he's going to be with me forever and ever and ever. He's as close as the mention of his name. Somebody say amen. He is the spirit of truth. He is Adonai, our master. What is the fruit and the blessing of this? I don't have time to read it, but I want you to read Deuteronomy 28, 2 through 6 and 11 through. Well, I am going to read it. I want, you to, I want you to know this is the fruit of the blessing of obedience. All these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body and the produce of your ground and the increase of your herds and the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flock. Come on, somebody. Blessed will be your basket and your needy bowl. Blessed will you be when you come in and blessed will you be when you go out. Woo, that's so good. He's so good. And verse 11 says, and the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body. Woo. My body's going to produce some fruit. I don't know what that means, but Lord, you're good at it, right? In the increase of your livestock, in the produce of your ground, in the land in which the Lord swore to your fathers 35 years ago. I want you to make a difference in this city. I want you to reach internationals, not just one kind of people, every people. Say every people. I've witnessed his miracle. Worship team, will you come? There's so many reasons Why do I obey? How do I obey? What is the fruit and the blessing of my obedience? It is the obedient proof that he is Adonai, our master. I'm not going to play the song, Daniel. You can put that other verse up there. Our living obedient proof is the full surrender. Say full surrender. I'm asking you today. Do it again. If you haven't done it already, do it it now. If you did it a month ago, but you... You kind of went away. The enemy would like to tell you, it's okay. You can sin and still get to heaven because you know Jesus. You can't get to heaven if you don't serve Jesus. Hear me. A lot of people are going to say, Lord, Lord, and he's going to say, depart from me. I didn't know you. You You didn't have relationship with me. Our living obedient proof is the full surrender. I want to say to you this morning, stop arguing with God about the things that you know are not good for you. He said no. So ask him then what? I'm going to say it again. Examine your decisions. Stop arguing with God about things you know are not good for you. If he said no, then you ask him, okay, Lord, then what? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to learn from this? How do you want me to proceed? That's what relationship is with the Father. I'm asking right now, Holy Spirit, quicken our hearts. If we compromise our obedience, it will compromise our blessing. If we compromise our obedience, it will compromise our blessing. That means it will dilute it. It will diminish it. If we fail to obey God, our lives will fail to receive his benefits. If we bargain with God for a lesser commitment, we will be bargaining with the devil in hell for a lesser punishment. I know that's tough. I want you to know your life depends on it. Not only yours, but somebody else's. Somebody stayed faithful 35 years ago so we could be in this place. Somebody stayed faithful 25 years ago so we could be in this place. Somebody stayed faithful 10 years ago so we could be in this place. Somebody stayed faithful one year ago, two years ago so we could be in this place. I'm telling you, he came, he died, he resurrected so we could have the living proof and the power to fulfill God's purposes in our life. It is a beautiful thing. It's not difficult to follow Jesus when you have the power of the Holy Spirit at work. I want you to stand all over this place. I prayed about how to end this service. And what are y'all singing? Yes. They're going to sing, I've witnessed it. And here's what I'm asking you as I pray with the ones who are online. I, I, I'm going to pray with you. 
this morning, I want this to be an altar. I want this to be a place of commitment. And I'm going to ask you to move from your seat, every single one of you. Even if you don't know what to do, you know, move. Movement means when I obey, I have to move. When Erica had to pay that bill, she had to move from her apartment to the job to the bank. We move. So I want you to move this morning. I want you to make a move towards God in this altar area. This is a place of sacrifice as they sing. And I want you to say to the Lord, why do I obey? Show me. I want you to say to the Lord, how do I obey better when it's hard? Give me the Holy Spirit. I want you to say to the Lord, God, I see the fruit of the blessing of my obedience. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm so thankful that the Word of God truly permeates our heart and changes our mindset so we can walk in victory. So today, if something in the message spoke to you, I want you to invite Jesus to be in control in a new way, in a broader way, in a total way. So I want you to pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, you say it, dear Lord Jesus, I invite you right now, I invite you right now to take control of my life. I thank you, God, that you are forgiving me of sin. You are helping me to walk in a new, right relationship with you. And Jesus, from this day forward, I give all of my heart to you, all of my steps to you. And I trust that with your help, Jesus, I can walk in victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I also want to pray for your miracle in motion. I know that there are many people who watch online and you have walked through some difficult circumstances already this year. So, Father, right now, for that one who is saying, I need that prayer, I need to know that Jesus hears me, that God sees me, that he's working on my behalf, I pray the Holy Spirit that you will come into that place where they're watching right now. You will increase their faith. You will remind them that you are Jehovah Rapha, the healer. You are Jehovah Jireh, the one who provides. You are Jehovah Shalom, the peace of God in the midst of anxiety and and turmoil. Father, meet every need of your son or daughter that's watching right now. Son or daughter of the Most High God, hear the Lord say to you, I am working. Your miracle is in motion. I'm going to turn your chaos into peace. I'm going to turn your storm into victory. The Lord is with you. The Lord is for you. And he wants to heal your body, mind, and spirit. I want your faith to grow in Jesus' name. If you were here, I'd put my hands on your forehead for your thinking and your shoulders for letting you know that you've got someone holding up your arms today. So Lord, I pray that today the one watching this service online would feel the presence of the Lord. They would know that they are not alone. You are not alone. God is with you. We are with you and your victory is in motion. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen and amen. Now, I also want to say thank you. Thank you for the way that you partner together with your family of faith. I want you to write me. I want you to send me an email. Click on the link. Write us on Facebook or the church website, icfrome.org. And know that today is the beginning of the best week you're going to have so far. I love you and I bless you in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm.